In just over two weeks, Edwin Edwards' third term as governor will come to an end. Edwards will likely spend plenty of time at his Texas ranch after Buddy Romer takes over state government March 14th. He recently gave reporters a chance to view his Texas hideaway, and Beth Courtney, who's been covering Edwards since 1972, was there and has this report. Morning. Sorry I'm late. The weather was bad. This is where Governor Edwin Edwards goes much of the time when he's out of the state and unavailable for comment. He's at the ranch in West Texas Hill Country, about 120 miles from San Antonio. This 1,500-acre spread has about 60 head of cattle, an attractive but modest ranch house, and is currently on the market for $1.6 million. Edwards has owned at one time or another four different ranches in Texas. The attraction for Edwards is hunting, something he enjoys doing with friends such as Wayne Ray, an unofficial aide who is currently under federal indictment. Edwards also enjoys being away from the burdens of government and the attention of reporters. But on this day, Edwards issued an open invitation to the media to visit, take pictures, and enjoy some barbecue. What are you cooking, Governor? Ribs, chicken, sausage, and brisket. Okay, let's go eat. Well, it was definitely home on the range with Edwin Edwards at his ranch in Texas as he was relaxed and reflective talking with reporters about the highs and lows of his political career. But it was certain that Edwin Edwards, the politician, is not retiring. I will be practicing law and doing some consulting, and I will be uh, watching uh, the political scene. It's in my blood and part of my life. And uh, while I do not intend to interfere or to try to uh, suggest what should or should not be done, uh, I will watch and see. And, and uh, as I said eight years ago when I left, if, uh, if uh, circumstances change and people are happy with the governor and uh, it appears that he has uh, retained his popularity and served the citizens of the state, I will do what everybody else does. I will applaud and say, thank goodness it happened. If on the other hand it doesn't, then uh, I'm going to take a look at the situation three years from now. Later in the day, Edwards did a series of interviews with reporters and talked about leaving office and his role in Louisiana's history. Any personal feelings of regret? Certainly, I'm, I'm leaving uh, that which I love most to do in life, and that is to serve the public. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I know that uh, all things come to an end, whether they're good or bad, and uh, it's something that uh, I'm perfectly willing to accept and understand. Are you afraid that the, the future generations are going to get a skewed view of Edwin Edwards? I haven't been warring with the media. I've been defending myself and trying to correct the record and <clears throat> set, set matters straight. Uh, my problems have not been with most of the working press who, by and large, are honorable people and do their jobs. Uh, I have no concern at all about the truth. As long as the truth is spoken or written, that's fine with me. I'll live and die with it. My concern has been with the publishers and editors of the major newspapers who have tried to mold policy uh, to their own thinking without a real concern for the needs of the people of the state of Louisiana. Having said that, uh, I certainly would not want to be judged 10 years from now or 50 years from now based upon what people read in the newspapers because it does not accurately portray uh, Edwin Edwards as a man or as a uh, public servant. But third, uh, I console myself when I realized that the press was more antagonistic towards Hugh along at the time he was governor than they've been to me as bad as they have been to me. Yet people do not remember him for the critical things the press said about him because then as now they were wrong. He was right and they were wrong. Uh, you know, I was criticized when I wanted to keep the saints in New Orleans. It turned out I was right. I was criticized when I wanted to keep the world's fair open. It turned out I was right and they were wrong. I was criticized when I wanted to build another bridge in New Orleans. It turned out I was right and they were wrong. I was criticized when I wanted to change the method of collecting taxes on oil by the same people. I was criticized when I advocated a lottery. It turns out sooner or later we're going to have a lottery. It's unfortunate we didn't have it when I first advocated it. We would be a lot better off today. Finally, I certainly would want people to remember me as, as a person who came from a very humble and poor background and who never forgot his origins and therefore empathize with and understood and sympathize with other people who are having a hard time making it. I'm talking about uh, single mothers and single fathers who would difficult, have a difficult time bringing their children up and, and those 
aged people, who 25 to 30,000 of them in nursing homes that are lonely and scared and by themselves and have no one to turn to except the staff at the nursing home uh, to help them get by from day to day and to keep them out of pain and to, and to provide some measure of hope and, and joy for them in the last years of their life. Well, on March 14th, when you're no longer governor, the state will have a bond rating worse than Puerto Rico. It will be $700 million in debt. We'll have the highest unemployment in the country. What do you feel? Very sad. Uh, I see uh, especially sad because it wasn't necessary. Edward says he hopes Buddy Romer succeeds as governor. On the other hand, if he doesn't, Edward says the people might give him another opportunity. In any case, despite his affection for Western scenery, Edwards will not be riding into the sunset as this political drama ends on March 14th.